Now, I mean, people may have thought I was exaggerating last week when I said that every time I call you, you end up replying saying, oh, I'm washing my hair, I'll call you back and you never call back. For the record, I did ring you earlier today, you didn't answer, and then you replied and said, I'm sorry, I'm at the salon. <laughs> and then you didn't ring me back. So, you know, I think your hair obsession is really starting to come between us, Barra. We need to have serious discussion. Well, there's some things in life you just cannot uh, walk away from. And you know this as well as I do. A hair appointment is right on top of that list. See, I even got a, a trim. My hair is shorter than it has been in a long time. Uh, it's looking fuller. And uh, I don't know why I use that uh, hand signal. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> also, also uh, <laughs> for a change. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I wasn't washing my hair, but I was getting my hair washed. I was on the shampoo chair. So it was very difficult to pick up your call. And <laughs> I think we should just roll the bump. <laughs> Yeah, let's do it. Let's roll the bumper. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to a full episode of uh, The Good, Bad, and The Ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> in what's been, uh, well, it, it's again, several exciting days. With all sorts going on, T20 World Cup, uh, more late nights for us. Although I, I, I'm pretty excited about uh, some of these games that are being played at mm -hmm. nine o'clock Australia time. Oh my mm -hmm. gosh, that's oh that is going to be so good. Uh, now, if you're joining us live, and I can see some of you coming on here already, please do uh, drop some nominations or comments in in the live chat. We will get to them if we can. Hello, hello, Krish. I hope you're doing well. Yes, Shanky, you're right. The Chronicles of Barrett's hair. It, I'm waiting for it to get its own Twitter account. Unbelievable. Uh, hello to Phils. I can see you there as well. Um, really good to see all of you. So uh, do feel free to drop in your nominations. Hello, Ro Rohan. I can't say hello to everyone, but I do, do definitely try. Uh, great to have your company as always. Uh, let's go on with some nominations, shall we? Because we've got a lot to talk about. Uh, first up, we have uh i am shash we've got a few nominations coming in from from a couple of people so good mm -hmm. pakistan and south africa who are not giants in world cricket have significantly punched above their weights uh, they've been punching all right mm -hmm. pakistan have been really punching knockout blows um yeah, I, I don't know whether uh, the fact that people are talking about Pakistan punching about their weights kind of uh, tells you what you need to know about uh, Pakistan as a team, right? Because they've not been on, um, say, Indian television uh, for sure as much as they should have been. Not many people gave Pakistan, um, you know, too much of a shout, even in even in that group. Uh, you know, India and New Zealand were uh, billed as the favorites to get out of that group, but. Um, Pakistan and Afghanistan were always going to be dangerous teams. And Pakistan just have everything you need to be successful as a T20 team, especially in the UAE. So um, uh, honestly, no surprises. They've, uh, if if any, uh, you know, like you said, Mel, if anything, they've, uh, yeah, they've knocked a few teams out, really. Uh, if not literally, then definitely figuratively speaking. Uh, they've been super dominant. And they've found different ways to uh, win matches as well. Brave call from Barbara Azam yesterday. When your team hasn't officially qualified, you know, teams like Namibia, Scotland can trip you up, uh, especially in, uh, on these pitches. But to win the toss and to bat first, go against the grain, uh, shows you how confident they are. They are already uh, had one eye on the semi-final, and that's really not a bad way to go about uh, your campaign. Uh, and and that positivity has paid off. Uh, as far as South Africa, look, I, a lot of people build them as the dark horses in this tournament because they've had a great run in the last eighteen months, and they've also like gone and found uh, uh, players who play def have defined roles now. I think David Miller without A.B. de Villiers and Faf du Plessis and Hashim Amla. Uh, seems uh, to have really uh, uh, rediscovered himself almost like he is the senior most member of that side 
and he seems to uh, cherish or you know thrive on that responsibility he finished that game off against sri lanka when it looked like it was going against them so you know there's so much talk about um australia and west indies in that group one but south africa like you know quietly snuck up on mm. those two teams and, and yeah i mean they're they are in as better uh, as good a position as any other team in that group to make it through alongside england yeah that whole south africa australia west indies little dynamic there is is pretty interesting at the moment could come down to net run rate as well uh which would be very interesting and he mentioned david miller uh, winning yeah winning that game I, I did tweet at the time the, the uh, testosterone with him and Rabada <laughs> and the yelling the testosterone actually came through my screen and I spontaneously grew a beard it was just so potent so that's uh good signs for them if they can you know make someone grow a beard or a woman grow a beard on the other side of the world I think that's quite impressive the other and thing was, about it was quite the WG Grace beard as well. You did send me a picture of uh, you in a beard, which unfortunately yeah. I can't share with the world. It was <laughs> it was quite full, I must say. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it was. Luckily, I've you know I've had the razor out uh, since yeah. then. Uh, and and also you're right. I mean, watching South Africa come, come and sneak up Pakistan in red hot form, and I thought it was interesting that they decided to bat first because I mean. Everyone has been talking about got about sec second to win at this T20 World Cup. Well, we've seen England and South Africa win now batting first. Sorry, South Africa, Pakistan win batting first. Um, and yeah, I, I just think that's a, that choosing to do that is a really good statement to just show and also give you a chance to actually work out how to bat and set a target. Um, in this tournament because it's just been so difficult for teams to do and and you think that that might if a team can can bat first and win in this in this super 12 stage it might actually do them a world of good when it comes to the latter part of the tournaments because you know if you, if you get to the final and mm -hmm. you lose a toss and you're batting first you want to know that you've actually figured it out a little bit first so and, and also but uh, with Pakistan, I mean, we, we did have this in the title. I I think they're going for New Zealand. I think this is the ultimate revenge for New Zealand pulling out of the Pakistan tour is that they have decided they're going to knock them off from that, you know, little perch of the nicest guys in international cricket. We all know that. Yeah, yeah, all of that stuff. And and that footage of them going in into the Namibia team rooms afterwards, genuine warmth, hugging the, the team, giving them tips as well and talking about, you know, how they did certain things. That's one of the loveliest things I've seen in this World Cup so far. Um, that, that was just great to see that. And I'm so glad they shared it. Well, we've had some, you know, pretty ugly off-field stuff like we always mm. do. Um, that, I, I just thought that that was really wonderful to see. Yeah, said New Zealand, Pakistan are coming for you. You and your nice it, guy act. I know, I know. And uh, I see Rajiv is here, and I know there are some other uh, wrestling aficiona, aficionados listening to this show or watching the show. And Pakistan are doing the ultimate baby face turn, which is basically they're becoming the ultimate good guys, Mel, to translate that for you. Uh, and and uh, like you said, you, they've suddenly become this really lovable team that uh, you want to root for, uh, you know. And, and before I move on with that, Mel, I have to say this, though. The best part about that uh, Pakistan-Namibia clip, clip for me was uh, Shaheen Shah Afridi and David Visa doing something that you and I are going to do in a month or so when we finally get to meet meet each other, which is basically hug each other every two minutes because that's yeah. we missed each other. They just kept hugging each other. Like, every time the camera turned to them, they would like you know hug each other and not say much. Uh, so there's that some love story brewing there uh, between two really tall lanky guys. But uh, and, uh, the tall thing's funny because I kept thinking, you know, wow, that's really amazing. It's the first time I haven't seen Shaheen Shah Freedy look crazily tall. Yeah, <laughs> when true. he was standing next to David Weezer. That was just great. I loved it. Everything about that was good. So. Uh, yeah, excellent. Look, lots of lots of nominations coming in. Just uh, having trouble going through them. I did see someone, say, Ranjit, saying, "Bad." I am tired of hearing experts saying New Zealand punching above their weight. We didn't say New Zealand were punching above their weight. Mm. It's 
there's no they're 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 in the right division i think in in my hair uh rajiv says ridiculous how great bharat's hair is looking today just putting that in there for you um and some others coming in so let us bring up another nomination from twitter because we've got, we've got some nominations coming in live that that go with that as well bad this is from I'm Chash again. The pictures at the UAE, not up to the T20 standards of entertainment, only one 175 plus score. I guess you have to take in, keep in mind for that, that you know what, it's a pandemic and that it wasn't ideal, that it was supposed to happen in India. It couldn't mm -hmm. happen in India. Same with the IPL. So in the end, uh, they've they kind of had to have a make do sort of situation. and. There wasn't really much they could do about that because you know there weren't that many options for where they could actually host it um i mean i think it's a good thing that the pitches are different uh, yeah. at the three different venues so it's not like they're all the same um and just the, the the different bounce uh the way that varies from one to the other and you know the the fact that, that you can't just play one as you, as you can the other and even the difference between sort of day and night games as well. So so for me, I, I completely understand where you're coming from because there, I, there don't, I don't think there are as many sixes sort of being hit as you would normally see and those, those big totals, which we sort of expected would happen. But at least there's been some sort of variety in there. Um, it, it, the hardest thing is, I think, those night games that the, the toss plays such a big factor and that's, that's probably, I think, more worrying than 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 the low scores uh, because you don't want that to be the deciding factor for all the games. So it's good that we've had a couple of wins from teams batting first. Yeah, and personally, Mel, I'm very, I've actually found this World Cup to be very entertaining. Uh, maybe I'm just a, a cricket nerd. Uh, I'm not, <laughs> actually, but uh, you know, I, and the reason for that is. Um, you know, while there is a place in T20 cricket for, uh, you know, over analysis and matchups and all that, because the conditions have been the way they are, uh, it's involved a lot of cricketing smarts. The teams have done well, our teams have thought on their feet, uh, and it, it's generally been the batters in the middle or the captains in the middle who have done a lot of that, whether it's Morgan's captaincy or the way Pakistan have batted or the way England have batted. So, you know, it's kind of pushed some of these, like, you know, matchups and all that to the side to an extent. Um, and it's meant that uh, conventional cricket has often won over unconventional cricket uh, during the last two weeks, uh, especially after the Super 12s began. Uh, so I, I personally uh, am loving the whole uh, strategizing aspect of it. Like, again, on the feet, uh, the players doing it more than, you know, the support. So I know Nathan Lehman still holds out those numbers. But I have a sneaky feeling Morgan doesn't listen to him as much as he would otherwise. That's just, that's just, that's just me. Um, and also another thing, uh, without uh, sounding very nerdy, uh, is because the ball hasn't really come on uh, a lot in, on any of these pitches. There have been the odd pitch where uh, you can hit through the line. Um, what it has resulted in is like all these power hitters that you see around the world. Take West Indies, for example, whether it's Russell or Pollard. Or even Bravo, they're all they all hit the straight field. They they do have some cross batted shots, but they're more straight hitters. They just use their power and just you know clobber the ball. Because the ball hasn't come on, it's uh, required. The, I mean, the likes who have done well uh, when it comes to power hitting are the likes of Puran or Glenn Maxwell, who have a, a wider range when it comes to hitting. Like you know, who can manipulate the the angles uh, to their advantage and hit across the line. So, which is made for, I think, really good cricket, which has also meant that the the proper batters in the side, uh, you know, the Barbara mm -hmm. Razas, the Virat Kohli's, to an extent, I know people will jump on it when we talk India, but we will come to India later, um, or even even some of the others. And uh, whenever Mushfiq Rahim has done well for Bangladesh, or uh, top of my head, I can't think of this. There's just been too many players playing. Joss Butler, we leave aside. I mean, he's just uh, a genius. He's different gravy. Different, different. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh, Josh Butler should play as his own team in this tournament. I will still win matches, I think, the way he's batting. Uh, so I think I I've actually found it entertaining, uh, uh, rather than e even compared to the last World Cup 2016, even though I covered it from most of the venues like you did in India. After a point, it became slightly predictable. Here, I think, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it, even though, yes, the toss has uh, had a big say. But look at the teams who've done well. England are uh, batting first. England, Pakistan. 
and Afghanistan. Yes, West Indies won a game which Bangladesh lost, really. So these three teams have really got their uh, got uh, their approach right, and that's why they've done well. Absolutely. Um, okay, let's bring up our next one. I'm just looking for some other ones as well on high. We've still got some lots coming in, which we really appreciate. Uh, but our next topic is uh, well, good. Okay, that's a that's another one that's that's on that. Be basically, you've just ruined that one, haven't you? You've already talked about that one. It's actually competitive. <laughs> you should just have like a pause button for me. <laughs> but it is, and uh, look, I think it's. I think it's really exciting. I mean, when you're talking about India playing Afghanistan coming soon and and that the fact that, you know, Afghanistan are a good team in the UAE with mm -hmm. lots of experience, more experience, you'd say, than India in recent years in the UAE playing T20 cricket. So who knows what will happen there? But it, it, it is. You look at that. Uh, yeah, for me, that uh, Australia, uh, West, uh, you, you know, that it, India's group is just super tight really in the results in the next few days anything could could happen and then but then yeah in the other group that that whole australia um and south africa and west indies little thing and you know bangladesh might have a big say in whether australia go through they've got to play bangladesh and west indies the two teams that have beaten them for four one in mm. in their most recent series albeit with different teams in different conditions so yeah it is i agree with you I've, I've enjoyed it i think it is competitive um let's let's bring up another nomination shall we hopefully barrett hasn't already talked about that one already ah there we go the bad india not playing well let's go boys there's a couple more comments about india i know oh there's there's ridiculous from snehal ridiculous clueless indian team uh and uh let's see if i can get this right venkatana ryanan says ridiculous and boring t20 world cup without india already given up on that one uh and yeah there's there's a lot basically saying india oh here's one from jaya raman who says bad the deer in the headlights face that the indian top order seems to have when asked to bat first. Uh, and also from Jaya Raman, ridiculous Kohli, the man who beat probability. <laughs> Basically, a lot of Indian fans are really, really worried mm -hmm. and uh, seem to have already given up on India. They've written them off. Have you written uh, them off? Understandably so, yeah. I think India are, have left themselves with very... Very little chance of going through. A lot of people I saw on social media say, oh, now we're just going to back Afghanistan to beat New Zealand. But have you seen Afghanistan's net run rate? <laughs> because uh, unless, even if India beat them by a humongous margin uh, tonight, uh, they still are, they're plus three point something. Mm. So they, uh, you know, they could still, uh, you know, and, and then if they go on to beat New Zealand, then it's Afghanistan will go through, not India or New Zealand. Uh, and my money is on that happening, Mel. I really am backing Afghanistan to go through this group. I might get some hate tweets uh, from some Indian fans. But I think, like you said, a lot of Indian fans have uh, understandably given up on India in this T20 World Cup. Uh, and I think I understand where they're coming from as well. The disappointing thing is in the fact that they have lost, uh, but the manner in which they have lost. Uh, they looked pretty helpless and hapless in both games. You know, the fact that in two matches, you've only taken two wickets. Yes, the batting has uh, failed. I mean, batting failed in the second game for sure. Uh, but just, you know, it, uh, yes, they did look like, uh, like you know, uh, a deer in front of the high headlights or uh, more so like a kangaroo in front of the headlights. So they went, uh, you know, they came running towards the car, if anything. <laughs> the, it was, they, yeah, I mean, there were uh, some crashes uh, during that uh, Indian batting performance on a Let's face it, on a tough pitch, uh, the ball really didn't come on. And uh, again, it, 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 the fact that they pushed Ishan Kishan to open in, in the second game, pushing Rohit Sharma down, this told you about the the panic sort of in that dressing room where you're uh, you know moving Rohit Sharma down the order in a big World Cup match. Uh, I think it was just the third time since 2012 I saw some stat on Twitter that he had uh, not opened the batting in white ball cricket for India. Uh, tells you that they really weren't sure about uh, what their approach is. And it goes back to what 
the good things we've said about Pakistan and Afghanistan and even South Africa to an extent, and definitely England, where these are teams where players have defined roles. I think the problem for India is, and it's not a new problem, they spoke about it before the tournament began as well. When you have Rohit Sharma, KL Rahul and Virat Kohli, I mean, genius batters in their own right, but all three kind of playing a similar role, uh, does that make a good T20 side? I'm not sure, uh, you know, especially in these conditions where the ball is not coming on and it's difficult to change gears. And that's what India have really struggled to do. They're difficult. Uh, other teams have started slow, like England against Sri Lanka or West Indies against Bangladesh. And they've made up for it. But India have just struggled in both games mm -hmm. to make up for that slow start. And I think it comes down to that, uh, not having defined roles and making changes like they've done in the last two games. So, um, yeah, and, and I will also say that they look really out of it. Like, just looking at some of their faces, they just look jaded. Like, you know, they look like uh, you and me at the end of a long tour. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah, of course, um, you know, our job is... Uh, as not as strenuous as theirs, but you know they've been on the road since May, and I'm not saying yeah. that as an excuse. I'm not saying that's the top reason for why India have lost, but you can't ignore that reason at all. I mean, you can. How can you just say no, no, no? They're professional. They're paid uh, millions of dollars to play, but they're still human at the end of the day. And I'm glad Bumrah came out and said what he did, uh, yeah. and it doesn't get any easier. Whatever happens in this World Cup, uh, to tonight, I think they're picking the T20 squad for the New Zealand series. A new setup altogether, new coach, new captain. It it never ends that caravan for India. So uh, I guess uh, like Ian Williamson would say, it is what it is. But uh, yeah, understandably, uh, understandable disappointment all around India for their team's performance. Yeah, and I, look, I don't, I don't think it's when you look at a side, compare it to a side like in England where they there's hardly anyone in that side who plays Test cricket. You know, they they have when you talk about defined roles and everything else, and it, I, I think that plays a bit of a, a part in a, in their success in this format generally is that they've, they've really split their teams a lot more. They don't have as many. I mean, they'd, they'd have more if everyone was fully fair to Ben Stokes is there, if Jofra Archer was there, sure. Uh, but I, I just I wonder if that's a bit of a formula for success in teams in just splitting the focus a bit more and, that you look at Australia and Australia struggles, and I think yeah. that's part of it for Australia is that they've got they pick all their best players for everything, all the big ones, and they, and but that means there's not the plan kind of building up to it. Um, so yeah, it's it's going to be pretty tough for India to get through. Anything could happen, obs, but you'd say that the chances are are weighted in the favour of them not making it than they are and it's still isn't that amazing thing isn't it that they've created the world's premier t20 format and haven't won a t20 world cup since it's amazing there you go and, and, a, and a good fact from ranjit thorat i see uh coming in through in the comments that india and bangladesh were the only teams that never played a t20i uh in the ue i mean a lot of the indian players have played what three seasons of the ipl 2014 uh, last year and this yeah. year but yeah, I mean, you know, that plays into it as well. Uh, you know, the conditions have uh, found out a lot of teams and players and uh, India are definitely on top of uh, that list. Yeah, that, absolutely. Okay, let's bring up uh, some more nominations, shall we? Um, our next one is... I think we really, we just did that one. Yeah. There. Ah, the Ridiculous from Rajiv. England look unstoppable in their first four matches. Well, they look, yeah, they look pretty damn good. I mean, mm. I, so to, even though they absolutely smashed Australia to pieces, uh, I thought their their victory over Sri Lanka was more yeah. impressive yeah. Um, just because they had to play it in a completely different way. And to see Joss Butler play the innings he did in both of those matches, mm. I, I you know, he's for me, he's the best T20 batter in the world. The, oh. the fact he was able to do that was absolutely incredible um, in different conditions. And like you say, that whole thing about whether players can hit through the line or or whether they're manipulators and use the pace and play the cross bat shot. We saw some of the England players who rely more on cross bat shots actually getting out quite cheaply. Mm. Um, but his ability to adapt. I, I mean, you just take your hat off to him, really. 
But but also Morgan's captaincy has been outstanding. And you saw in that game, you know, he lost time on Mills and yeah. he had to bowl Moeen Ali for their final over. And everywhere he put his fielders, um, even, you know, almost behind the bowler, it, they were there to take a catch. Um, and so that, I mean, that's a combination of three things, a combination of great captaincy, a bowler bowling to what he knows his, his captain's going to set, and then the fielders also being excellent, which they were. But you look at that and then you look at, you know, the Australia game where um, Aaron Finch was out in the middle for quite some time. So so Owen Morgan didn't bowl Moen Alley at all because he didn't want the offy bowling to, to Finch. So, yeah, fair fair play to Morgan for his smart captaincy as well and for the way that that England have adapted. I mean, they look red hot. It's hard to see a team going through this T20 World Cup without losing a match. Like, you'd think that someone's going to come unstuck somewhere. Um, but, yeah, it, they do look unstoppable at the moment. But but we'll see. They, they, they could well come a cropper somewhere. Uh, yeah, and before I start, a big uh, shout out to our friend uh, Rajiv Mel. Uh, he uh, England have been as unstoppable as he has in the last one month. He's gotten engaged, uh, took his partner to Disneyland, and you know uh, I, I'll send you pictures. Set it up beautifully, <laughs> and uh, I think two three days back he bought uh, his first ever home. So yeah, I mean he's doing in England over there in America. So uh, and, and coming back to. Uh, England, uh, you know, you don't see any team going through, uh, or it's unlikely that team will go through without losing. Australia and West Indies would certainly hope that England actually stay unbeaten <laughs> because if they lose to South Africa, it's all over for Australia and West Indies. Definitely for West Indies and more or less for Australia as well because of, because of net run rate. And uh, look, Mel, I think uh, the English England team that made the final in 2016. They kind of showed us where England were with their white ball cricket. If you think about it, it was less than a year into this whole revolution in England, right? Morgan uh, and whatever he and uh, Trevor Bayliss did. Uh, and what was lacking from that team was uh, of the variety that they have now with their bowling. The batting looked pretty strong back then as well. I mean, Alex Hale was Alex Hale. Alex Hales was at his peak. Jason Roy was actually batting better then than he is now in many ways. Uh, and, and they had everybody else. Uh, Morgan was actually, I actually Morgan struggled in that last world and that World Cup as well. But I think now look at the variety, and the only team I can think of with similar variety in this World Cup is Pakistan. Mm. Look, they have pace, they have spinners who can turn the ball in both ways, and more importantly, spinners who can bowl at any time during a match. They can bowl mm. in the power play overs, they can bowl in that tricky seven to twelve over period. And both Moin Ali and Rasha, Adil Rashid can bowl in the depth as well. So they've just looked like such a uh, more well, well-rounded well side. And then you have someone like Butler having, uh, you know, that kind of tournament where uh, he just looks unstoppable, uh, you know, and for hopefully for, for our sake, he stays unstoppable. It's so much fun to watch because yeah. I think unlike a lot of other T20 mega stars we see around the world, Joss Butler can actually play... Uh, all four formats, I'm including T10, actually five formats, T10 and 100 as well, in the space of 20 overs. And that's how highly skilled he is. Uh, though I will say personally, I hope that you know they kind of ease him out of their test side so that we just get to see Josh Butler for a, a couple of extra years with white ball cricket. He's just an absolute genius at work right now. And it's so much fun to watch, just like England are as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so just a couple of nominations coming in from Gautam Ray. Good. The names of the Namibi Namibian cric cricketers, yeah, Nif Nicole Lofty Eaton and Piki Ya France. Yeah, I, uh, that, that just goes in as a nomination for good generally. Uh, and also from Gautam, Mitch Marsh, the only player <laughs> who played well in West Indies and Bangladesh, has been dropped as ridiculous. Goes back to what I said, Mel. What India did with uh, you know Rohit Sharma down the order, the same thing with Australia. You suddenly look at the opposition. You're like England. Oh no. Okay, what do we do? Like we need to do something against the grain to stop this juggernaut. And uh, yeah, you take a call like that. The one guy who's looked uh, as settled as anyone else in that T20 yeah. side, including Aaron Finch, if anything. Yeah. Um, you, you leave him out for uh, a big game like that. It, it was just. Uh, it didn't make sense, uh, and not just in hindsight, even when it happened. There were others who you could have uh, left out. Uh, you know, Stoinis is like for like in many ways with Mitch Marsh. If anything, he could have been left out. I'm still a backer of Steve Smith in this side, so I haven't mentioned yeah. his name. But who no, you no, never no, know. I agree. He, might, 
it might happen. But against Bangladesh, you would still need Steve Smith tomorrow, uh, you know, with their uh, spinners as well. So uh, it's a tricky one. But again, when you come into a tournament, when you don't have very strictly defined roles, this is what happens. Uh, it, teams do struggle and you take uh, calls like that. And big shout out to Sam as well. Uh, he's waving to us from Australia. Hi, Sam. Hi, Sam Colgan. Nice to see you. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it was it was bizarre. And, you know, we talked about way back when Australia were in West Indies and Bangladesh and we talked about their approach just being a bit muddled or it, it, it was just sort of hard to work out what they were doing. I, and then you, it sort of seemed like they'd settled on, on something. And I know that, you know, they had their restructure, um, as they called it, mm. based on, you know, what they thought either of the team or the conditions or everything else. But it just felt like it went back to that muddled thinking because then you end up having Glenn Maxwell coming in, you know, after, after only a couple of overs. And yeah. so you are basically making a weakness of, of his biggest strength in, exactly. in coming in after the power play. Uh, so it, it did feel it did feel muddled again. And the problem is now, no matter what they do, if they stay with what they had, then it, it will look like, well, again, questions asked about what they're doing. If they go back, then again, it, it looks like a little bit muddled, doesn't it? It's like they've gone, oh, we should try this. Oh, no, that didn't work. We'll go back to, to this. So when teams, when some teams make changes, they look like confident strategic changes. Yeah. Uh, the way that Australia made those changes, it, it, it didn't seem like it was that way. And, that, I mean, they just... Andrew McDonald said yesterday, look, but, you know, also they, you know, they probably don't know whether it was the right or the wrong decision because they, they just didn't play well enough anyway. And it probably doesn't matter what they did. England may well still just hammered them because they're a good side. Yeah, true. And, and just, you know, it, it tells you that last result tells you what, it, like, what you need to know about this Australian team. A team which came into that match with two wins. Right and two pretty decent wins. They got over the line, snuck over the line against South Africa. They're pretty dominant against Sri Lanka, and one defeat and suddenly like the can of worms, worms is open. So that tells you how uh, unsure that team is, uh, uh, and it's just on the surface that, uh, or, or like you know, at least it's unsure on the surface, not just on the surface but deep within as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I'd see what, Sam has a question in the day games coming up. Would you be tempted to play Agar over Stark, especially on the pitches? Mm. I mean, I like the idea. I thought Australia should go in with two spinners because Zampa mm. and Agar actually complement each other really well. Yes, they do. Uh, which is also very important. I mean, go, going back to when India used to play Kuldeep Yadav when Yuzvendra Chehel, especially Chehel, a lot of guys have missed him in this World Cup. Uh, there was that compliment, uh, like, you know, they complemented each other really well. Look at this World Cup. Look at Sodhi and Santner, Adil Rashid and Moin Ali. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Bangladesh, I'm sorry, Afghanistan's different. Mujib has uh, was left out for the last game. Uh, but Rashid Khan is a one-man army most times anyway. Uh, and they have other spinners as well. But teams that have done well have had two spinners complementing each other perfectly. Uh, mm -hmm. And I would actually, Sam, play uh, Agar. In place of Stark, I don't know. That's the thing. Who do you play him in place of? Uh, I can't drop Josh Hazel. He's looked the best of the bowlers so far. Uh, Pat Cummins, I'm not sure. Uh, you know, you wouldn't drop Pat Cummins, but that's the thing. To fit in two spinners, you have to uh, leave a batter out, but then it just completely, uh, you know, shifts the whole uh, balance of the team. And that's been the whole, well, that's that's the problem, isn't it? You sort of thought they maybe found their balance for those earlier games a bit better. They were settling in and they sort of had it, but as it goes on and maybe needing more spinners, uh, I, I don't know that the balance seems out of kilter again. They're an odd one. We'll see. We'll see if they go any further. Let's, let's bring up a couple more nominations because we've probably run out of time. We're running out of time. Uh, but um, we had a couple more coming in quickly uh, from Outlooks. Pakistan is playing fantastic cricket, but usually the upward ascend is quickly followed by a downward slope. Hope law of averages doesn't catch up with them. I mean, uh, usually it's Pakistan lose the, the first match or, or something in a World Cup and everyone writes them off and then all of a sudden mm -hmm. then they, they get this run on. So to see them performing so strongly at the start. But I think, too, you know, there's everything that's happened in Pakistan cricket over the past couple of months. 
you do sometimes find that teams that have just had all this stuff going on mm. actually end up pulling together more and feeling like they have something to play for. I mean, Afghanistan is an, another team that has been through all sorts of turmoil heading into this World Cup. Uh, mm. But it's, it's, sometimes you sort of find that, that teams get a bit of something about them because of that. Who know? I, I mean, the, the sort of cricket they're playing at the moment doesn't feel like, it doesn't seem like it's just they're on a roll. That they've, they've just got so many good pieces in place uh, in that team. Uh, so, so I don't know. On this World Cup, I, they might lose. They might lose a game. They might lose a really important game. But I, I don't think they're suddenly going to stop being good. Uh, any anyone can have an off day on one of these, yeah. and when the toss goes against you, and someone else gets on a roll. But yeah, I, I do think they're going to be impressive and competitive all the way through for however far they get. I'm with you there. Yeah, I, for a change, this seems like a very different Pakistan team. And I go back to that little clip we saw of uh, Baba Razam pleading with his players after the India-Pakistan match saying, please, we have this reputation of us doing exactly what Hashtag Outlooks is saying they do, which is slip up, have that uh, big drop in uh, terms of performance. But he, he was pleading with his players not to go down that road and try to not get too overexcited and, uh, you know, stick to what they're doing. And so far, they've done that. Like, you know, even uh, last night, uh, you know, the way they started and then how they, what, they were none for 59 after the first 10 overs and then to make a big score from there. Uh, and uh, I think Bazid Khan, the great Bazid Khan, tweeted yesterday or this morning as well about Hassan Ali was the one sort of weakling in the bowling attack. Uh, he came in with a lot of confidence, but... Has has ha, hadn't done too well till last night, um, and getting Mohammad Hafiz amongst the runs as well. Uh, you know he's uh, he's look you can see on the field he plays that professorial role. No wonder that's his name nickname uh, on the field. But it's good to have uh, that going. So I would doubt Pakistan might lose, but I don't see them uh, you know have that kind of uh, shocker yeah. of a performance where you know they just don't look uh, like or where you suddenly wonder wait is this the pakistan team that woke up for or the whole old cliche of which side of the bed they wake up from yeah exactly they're just a, a wonderful team uh look we've sort of gone gone over what we normally do and I, i'm so sorry to all of you whose comments we haven't got to on nominations we haven't gone to but so much to talk about uh the time has come to announce the winners first of all it's time for the goodest thing. All right, Angelic Barat, what's the goodest <laughs> thing since we last spoke? Since since I'm the angel on the show, Mel, I have to, I know we've spoken a lot about them, uh, but just Pakistan for me, uh, on and off the field, have one hearts uh, and, you know, just the way they've gone about their cricket uh, and, you know, just even... When the camera pans to their uh, to their dressing room or their dugout, when uh, you know the match is on, you can see Matthew Hayden and Vernon Philander. I mean, like it, it's a weird combination. Like you know, I can't think of Matthew Hayden and Vernon Philander in the same sentence in any any sphere. And Matthew Hayden, I don't think he's he had any coaching experience of note, right? It's a very subcontinental thing. You bring in players, uh, former players from overseas, especially Australia, and make them into coaches. India have done that quite a few times in the past. Uh, and it's worked. And uh, someone said, Matthew, hey, I think Mohammad Hafiz or one of the players said, Pakistani players said, Matthew Hayden was the one who gave them that challenge to like, you know, bat first and make 190. Uh, I think, but just, you know, look at what happened, like you said, before the tournament began, teams backing out, uh, you know, it, it looked bad. It, it looked like, you know, uh, very ominous when once the t England and New Zealand backed out for whatever reasons, we wouldn't have to go into that. Uh, whether like you know, cricket in Pakistan's again drifting out, like what could happen next? Ramesh Rajapur, Ramesh Raja had just taken over and he's sending out these angry tweets, hate tweets to everyone, and understandably so as well. So, uh, putting that into context and uh, like how they've conducted themselves off the field as well, like that first clip I told you about Barbara Azam pleading with his cricketers, and yesterday the whole uh, look, I mean, it's great PR, it's well done. I mean, it's the camera didn't suddenly, it, it's not a wrestling segment which just happened because on live TV, but see the camera guy uh you know from the pakistan team was already inside the namibia dressing room i'm sure it wasn't a namibian uh, meeting going on when suddenly they just popped up <laughs> fair enough but it's good to see that kind of camaraderie and uh, david Reese and shaheen afridi uh doing what they did and the best part about everything from a cricketing sense is a strong pakistan team for me is always one where 
there are so many bowlers in that team that you want to look up to, right? And like, you know, you want to get, uh, you want to see more of. And that has been the case, whether it's Afridi, Haris Rao, who's been, I think, the find of the tournament from an international sense, World Cup sense. Um, and they're spinners. I mean, Imad Basim with his man bun has got the ball to swing a bit like, I mean, maybe a little more than even Mitchell Stark has. Yeah. Oh, ooh, controversial. Okay, so that is the good. What about the bad? Hey! <laughs> <laughs> hey, before we get to the bad, yes, uh, someone asked me earlier, I don't know whether we can pull it up, uh, whether I prefer Mel the journalist or Mel the commentator. It's a it's a, it's a, a tough call. It's like asking me to pick who's been the better team, England or Pakistan in this World Cup. So ah. I think Mel the commentator is right up there, but so is Mel the journalist. But I think ah. I prefer Mel the good, bad, ridiculous Mel the most. There you go. There you go. That's, that, that's clearly it. That, and thank you. Thank you to everyone, Sam and others who've been very, very nice about me commentating. I have a huge amount to learn, but it's a very good opportunity. Yeah, so, you know, the only thing missing is you and I have never commentated together. It's just pretty shocking. Yeah. We need never to make been, this happen. Yeah, no, it's it's sad that uh, you've never paired up in a commentary box. It'll happen for sure. Uh, It'll happen. Then, then we can do our Shaheen Afridi David visa hug every two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Minutes, 30 seconds. Uh, okay, the baddest thing for the week, uh, I mean, I have to talk about India. Uh, and it's just sad that this is the end for Ravi Shastri and Bharat Arun and that coaching staff. And they've done some remarkable things with this Indian team. And not just on in the basis of winning Test Series in Australia and putting India in a great position to win a Test Series in England. We'll know what happens into that series next year when we have a new coach. Uh, I'm guessing Virat Kohli will still be Test Captain. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, ooh. <laughs> but uh, you know, it's 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 sad just looking at Ravi Shastri's face and Bharat Arun. I haven't seen him much actually during this tournament. Then uh, generally they're together, so they've like I don't know split up as well in the in the dugout. But it's just been um, yeah, I've been sad watching them. Uh, uh, you know, their faces in the Indian camp and like someone like you know said sometime back, ridiculous the scheduling for India as well. It's getting worse and worse. There's no break for these guys. So uh, it, in a way, it's good that it, with it ends that chapter of the Kohli Ravi Shastri thing, at least in T20i cricket. India can make a fresh start. I guess Rahul Ravid will take over as coach and whoever is going to be announced as captain, Rohit Sharma or someone else later tonight, uh, you know, they can make a fresh start from there. But like, you know, for if, or the work that I know Ravi Shastri and his team have put in behind the scenes and for Virat Kohli in his first ever T20 World Cup, uh, I would have hoped for uh, like a slightly better finish, even if they hadn't gone all the way to win it. But yeah, that for me has been bad just watching this Indian team and how they're capitulated against two very good teams. Yeah, that's a, it, it is a shame after such a long run. Uh, but the big award of the day, it's time for the ridiculous. Uh, what you got? Um... Uh, how can we, uh, I mean, there are so many actually that we can talk about, but how can you look past Joss Butler and how ridiculously good he looks right now with a bat in hand, uh, Mel? I mean, I had the pleasure, Gav and I, of uh, visiting his home two years ago when we were doing the camper van thing. Uh, his mother had us over for tea. Uh, and, you know, this, and the ridiculous thing is like you just, like, you know, the I think the town's called Wedmore. The just just the town and how it is, and just speaking to his mother, spending some a uh, couple of hours in the house where he grew up, where he started playing all his river uh, sweeps and all that. There's no connection between that and Josh Butler, the the batter. You know the way he plays his game, the way he dominates. You don't expect that at all. I mean, the only thing I got, uh, uh, only thing I can compare it with is the size of the bulls in Wedmore. Like they have massive and intimidating, and that uh, I mean. For all opposition or uh, bowling attacks and bowlers who have to contend with bowling to Josh Butler, uh, I should I should tweet a picture out and that he must look to them or like he must come across as that big bull because you know they yeah you don't want to go anywhere close to them like uh, nobody wants to go anywhere close to Josh Butler the batter right now because there is nobody else really close to Josh Butler in terms of quality he's just batting at another level. Um, and like I said earlier, I just hope he continues for a long time. It, it is pretty ridiculous, especially during a World Cup where the talk has been, oh, low scoring matches. Oh, is the ball dominating too much? Oh, the ball's not coming on. Oh, due and this and that. And then you have someone batting at that level. 
just uh, I don't know. It's scary. Yeah, especially when um, you're so disadvantaged batting first. Yeah, let's just score a lazy century. Why not? <laughs> um, excellent. That that is it from us today. Thanks so much, guys, to all of you. I'm sorry I couldn't get to all of your nominations. They were just flooding in there, but we really, really appreciate all of them and your company and support as well very much some of that and uh yeah so please do give us a subscribe and uh come back and and follow us and join us next time send in your nominations now if you see anything over the coming days that you think is good bad or ridiculous just use the hashtag hashtag uh and and tweet it to us and um that that way you've got a bit even better chance of getting your nomination on the show uh until then i'm gonna probably go have a shower and wash my hair because i'm feeling bad now that uh, you know, I've seen Bharat's full hair and I, I probably need to go and work on mine a little bit. And until the next time, uh, enjoy, enjoy the cricket. We'll see you soon. Are you going to say something? Yeah, we have to wish them a very oh, happy Diwali. Happy Diwali. Happy Diwali to, to everyone in India tomorrow who's celebrating. Uh, thank you for reminding me. That's right. I hope you have many likes many wonderful lights lighting up your life for Diwali. Very exciting. And fireworks. There you go. Not my favorite festival. I once did write a piece called Diwali, the Festival of Frights, but we'll get, in, get into that and my other issues. Yeah, later but on. At least you don't have paint like thrown at you. That, oh, that's true. Yeah. I actually prefer Holi to Diwali, but I don't know. Uh, look, maybe it has something to do with my name uh, because at the end of, uh, I mean, Diwali is celebrated when Lord Rama comes back to take over his kingdom. And who does he take over his kingdom from? His brother Bharat. So maybe maybe there is a, it's like a, in a historical context, I have, I have issues with Diwali. But no, wish you guys <laughs> a very happy Diwali. Have a great day, I'm sure, especially in, uh, you know, after the difficulties that you guys have had to face in India, uh, you know, with the pandemic. Uh, please still stay safe, uh, you know, uh, don't go overboard. Like, I'm going to sound like Baba Razam here. Like, yeah, get vaccinated if you can, uh, if you haven't already and stay safe, but have a great Diwali and uh, yeah, uh, enjoy yourself. So what if India haven't really done what you thought they would do? Uh, you know, we're still here. Diwali to celebrate. Mm. Yes, we do. So have a great one, all of you. Enjoy watching the cricket. Hope your team does well, whichever team you're supporting. And until next time, well, we'll see you later. Enjoy the cricket. Okay.